Okay, hello and welcome to a brand new German New Medicine tutorial. I am your host, Dr. Melissa Sell. You can find out more about me at drmelissasell.com. And today for the tutorial, we will be discussing the self-devaluation conflicts. Now, these are the conflicts that are responsible for tissue changes in the lymphatic system, bone, skeletal muscle, blood vessels, and connective tissues. This will be an overview module. As you can see, there are a lot of tissues involved and there's a lot of detail. So this uh, beginning module will give you an idea of these connections. If you are new to German New Medicine, I recommend watching German New Medicine 101, an introduction to the five biological laws before watching this presentation so that you understand the paradigm that we are working from. The information contained in this presentation is intended for educational purposes only. It is not a substitute for professional medical advice. And here I share with you some of my resources that I used in the creation of this presentation. All right, so let's get started by just going over the basic premise of German New Medicine. This is the discovery and life's work of Dr. Rika Geerd Hammer, who discovered that tissue changes in the body, symptoms, what we call diseases, other than that due to injury, poisoning, or some type of nutri nutritional deficiency. All tissue changes, all sickness diseases are due to very specific intentional biological adaptations that are controlled from the brain. These adaptations are initiated by a moment in time when an individual was caught off guard by some type of conflict shock or a traumatic event that they were not prepared for. The body, when we are in a situation where we do not feel prepared, where we are overwhelmed by a moment, our body takes over. The, an ancient program within our body has a very specific way that it starts to adapt our bodily tissues in specific ways to address the situation, to help you survive whatever this conflicted moment, this event, this moment in time was. And so our bodies are very intelligent and they are very ancient. There's an ancient wisdom within the body that knows how to keep us alive. And that is what is responsible for what we can Consider disease and he has mapped out a very specific understanding biologically embryologically evolutionarily of this entire science that makes perfect sense why we end up with certain diseases or conditions or symptoms okay so in GNM we work backwards we start with whatever symptoms you are presenting with your symptoms tell the story of what conflict you experienced. And symptoms in the German New Medicine understanding usually show up in the healing phase. So typically, by the time you realize that you have something going on, the conflict, for the most part, has already been resolved. So what we wanna do is identify and become aware of the conflict source so we can prevent symptoms in the future. So an example of this would be, say, if you have uh, pain in the soft tissue of your right shoulder, and let's say you are a right-handed person, that gives us a lot of information. That tells us that you are in the healing phase of a self-devaluation conflict in regards to a relationship in your life. It could be your spouse, significant other, partner, father, or friend. Anyone except your mother or your child. This understanding is something that Dr. Hammer has specifically figured out for how the body functions. So here are a few of the symptoms and diseases and conditions associated with a self-devaluation conflict. And as you can see, there are a lot because all of the things listed on the screen right now are conditions of the specific tissues controlled from a specific region in the brain that responds to a self-devaluation conflict. So I'm not gonna read through all of these things. Hopefully you can read them well on the screen of the video. But these all have to do basically with the musculoskeletal system. So whether it's pain, some type of bone tumor, something to do with the connective tissue, um, the spine itself, the lymphatic system, leukemia, the blood, um, all of these things, they stem back to, they trace back to an initial self-devaluation conflict. 
So let's discuss what a self-devaluation is exactly. So this is a loss of self-worth. And something very interesting about this family of conflicts is in the other conflict families, it really has to be something that totally catches you off guard. With self-devaluation or self-worth, it can be a little more subtle, a little more nagging, a little more ongoing, it may just be kind of a subtle background feeling of devaluation where perhaps you are feeling embarrassed, ashamed, guilty, remorseful. You were humiliated by something. Self-devaluation and self-worth conflicts are very common after a diagnosis. Uh, feeling like a failure as a person, as a parent, as a spouse, as an individual, feeling useless, incapable. Some of these things occur at certain life stages when we don't feel any longer that we are serving a purpose. If you've been abused, if you will feel like you are unable to perform your daily activities or your job due to illness, injury, surgery, if you feel as though you're unable to provide, to earn for your family, if you're in debt, if you're feeling weak or too old or not smart enough, you're feeling like a burden to others, if you feel unattractive or you have some type of aesthetic devaluation where you dislike your face or your body or some aspect of yourself, loss of status, injustice, feeling like you just can't endure, that you are feeling worthless, like you're a bad person. So this all depends on your unique individual perception. Like everything in German New Medicine, it all comes down to you as an individual. There's no situation that will necessarily cause any of these types of devaluation. It has everything to do with the person having the experience. So let's talk about what exactly happens. So this is the first biological law of GNM. It's the psyche brain organ correlation. So at the moment that the self devaluation occurs, there is an impact. There is a noticeable impact that can be seen on CT scan in the cerebral white matter, which is the brain region that controls the connective tissue. And it will be in a very specific location based on the nature of the conflict. And the program associated is an erosion of tissue. So there is loss of tissue. There is less tissue to whatever region is affected. So be that the bone, the blood vessel, the lymph, the lymph vessel, whatever it is, there is a loss of tissue. So let's talk about the cerebral white matter itself. So this is the control center. This is the brain region that controls the connective tissue. And so you can see the layout of where the cranium, the arm, the cervical spine, how every area of the body is controlled from a very specific region in the brain. And so what we'll be mostly talking about are the bones, lymph nodes and vessels, blood vessels, cartilage, ligaments, tendons, and skeletal muscle. You'll notice that there are other areas of the cerebral white matter that we're not gonna be discussing today. This is a very detailed topic, as I'm sure you can tell. And so consider this an overview, not an exhaustive investigation on every aspect of the cerebral white matter or self-devaluation. Embryologically, we have to remember that there were three tissue layers from which all of the bodily tissues were formed. We've got the endoderm, the mesoderm, and the ectoderm. The mesoderm is divided into old mesoderm and new mesoderm. So this is the new mesoderm derived tissues. It's all controlled from this region of the brain, the cerebral white matter. Also, there is a cor crossover correlation. This is in the example that I gave a little bit ago about the uh, right-handed person having a right-sided issue being associated with someone that's not their mother or child. A right-handed woman will hold her baby mostly on the left side so that her dominant hand is free to do other things. And so biologically, the left side is correlated with the mother or the child. Because we want to know why does pain, why does discomfort, why do symptoms show up at a certain region? And like I said, all the symptoms that you have tell a very specific story. And so we need to know this crossover correlation in order to gain more information about what's happening at the tissue level. Another thing we want to look at is the depth, depth and intensity of the conflict. So like I said, a self-devaluation conflict affects all of these different tissues. What determines which tissue it affects? And the intensity and depth of the conflict does impact which tissue is involved. So a more light self-devaluation 
um, not as intense, not as serious, you might say, would affect the cartilage, tendons, ligaments, fat tissue, blood vessels. Um, These are the blood vessels, veins, and arteries other than that of the heart. A more moderate self-devaluation would affect the skeletal muscles, the lymph vessels, and the lymph nodes. And a very severe or profound self-devaluation, you feel it in your bones. All the way down, kind of boring deep within you, that depth, that intensity will affect the bones. And again, what determines how severe a certain conflict was for you? Your individual perception, how you uniquely see and experience the world. So which region of the body is going to be affected? Is it neck pain? Is it a problem with your knee? Does it have to do with your ribs or your sternum? There's another specific understanding for which area is affected. So if it's the bones of your head and neck of a severe self-devaluation, it would have to do with an intellectual conflict not feeling smart enough, feeling stupid, someone telling you that you're stupid, some type of moral issue, um, an injustice. So perhaps you lost a court case and you felt like this was absolutely unfair, this type of injustice conflict, an intolerance, some type of disharmony, dissatisfaction. If you made a mistake and you're beating yourself up for feeling foolish or doing something that you didn't think was smart, that would affect the head or the neck. The face and the bones of the face could be a scenario where you felt like you lo- you lost face, where you were humiliated or embarrassed by some situation, your personal appearance, or perhaps a character defamation. We mentioned the shoulder area, something having to do with a relationship, not being a good parent or a good partner. Hands, fingers, wrists, failure with the hands, some type of clum- clumsiness or lack of dexterity, you know, dropping something, you know, cutting yourself, messing something up, especially if your job has to do with something regarding your hands and you are feeling bad about your performance, your abilities, that will affect the area of the hands and fingers. Ribs and sternum, this tends to be a localized conflict regarding the chest. So very commonly um, after a mastectomy or even just a breast cancer diagnosis, the devaluation that a person feels for that region of their body, that will affect the bones in that region. So perhaps um, the person would get diagnosed with, quote, metastasis or mets to the, the sternum or the rib area. Um, Also, a surgery, something having to do with the heart. The lumbar region has to do with feeling unsupported or feeling shattered, like your life's work was destroyed, a severe, profound humiliation, or feeling debased. The mid-back or the thoracic spine, feeling like a broken person, maybe feeling like a loser, kind of a no backbone situation, humiliation, defeat, or failure. The pelvic region, the tailbone, the pubic bone, and the sacrum tend to be more localized conflict regarding sexuality, potency, fertility, voiding, something like hemorrhoids. You could develop a self-devaluation regarding that. Something that hits below the belt, self-worth type of issue. The hips and the femoral neck have to do with being unable to persevere, endure, or survive ongoing demands. The knees and shins have to do with athletic performance, also the femur bone. So an unfulfilled uh, ambition, perhaps. You always wanted to do a certain thing that you never got to do. Not being able to run, jump, or walk, or some other type of athletic feat. The feet and ankles, being unable to put up with something or someone. Not being able to kick them away. Maybe not being able to run away. Can't walk or dance, run or balance. These type of conflicts, by the way, they can happen even while a, a baby is in utero, while they're still a fetus. They can get the feeling, they can experience a self-devaluation before they're even born. This comes up in the case of a, a child perhaps born with club feet. Um, that would be due to a self-devaluation that they experienced before they were even born. The tooth dentin is a specific play on the self-devaluation regarding a bite conflict. This is, you cannot bite back. You're unable to say what you want to say. You can't defend or assert yourself in the way that you'd like to. All right, so what if it's the muscles that are affected? Again, this is a more moderate self-devaluation. The muscles are very interesting because they are 
multifunctional. There's the actual body, the trophic function of the muscle itself, but then there's also the movement of the muscle. So that is considered a motor conflict. If it's a restriction of your ability to move, we won't go too into depth um, on the specific motor conflicts and movement conflicts because that is a very rich topic and has to do with all sorts of things regarding paralysis, um, MS, ALS, and different um, paralysis type disorders. But we'll just kind of mention it here because it is included in this family we're talking about. And so the motor conflicts are controlled from the motor cortex. Again, head and neck will have that general theme of intellectual devaluation. If you're having a motor conflict of the head or neck, it's not being able to turn your head or look some uh, certain direction. The face, again, losing face, personal appearance, being made a fool of, the back and shoulder, relationship, um, being unable to step out of side, a step aside or get out of the way if it's a motor cortex movement conflict, hands and fingers, failure with the hands, clumsiness, or not being able to keep a hold of something or someone you can't catch or grab. The jaw muscles, so this would have to do with TMJ, unable to bite back unable to say what you want to say, being restricted in some way. The abdominal muscles have to do with feeling too much pressure, too much weight on your back, too much to handle, too much to carry. And what this does is, again, during the conflict active phase, there is erosion of the muscle tissue in that region, which would make it weaker. And so this is what makes a person susceptible to a hernia. Arm muscles, can't defend yourself, being restrained, cannot hug someone you'd like to hug, can't fight or push someone away. Leg muscles are localized conflict regarding sexuality, again, below the belt type issues, or not being able to run, get away, you can't keep up, not up to speed. And then all of these things are either literal, actual, not being able to do something, or figuratively. So this could be not, you know, feeling stuck in some area of life. Not that you're physically stuck, but emotionally, mentally, you feel like you are limited, restricted, or stuck. Now the blood vessels, this is a lighter self-devaluation. Once again, cerebral, external, so of the head region has to do with intellectual, external carotid, the face or personal appearance, subclavian, close to the shoulder, that has to do with the relationship, the leg arteries having to do with an athletic performance devaluation, abdominal aorta, fear of conflict in the abdomen, uh, and this is interesting too because if you notice back on the big list of all the different conditions, an aneurysm. So if you are afraid of something regarding your, your abdomen and if the blood vessel is affected, that can cause weakening of the aorta itself, the abdominal aorta, causing weakness which could lead perhaps to an abdominal aneurysm. The leg veins. This one's interesting too, a freedom restriction conflict or a ball and chain feeling stuck or burdened by some situation. And then varicose veins is a self-devaluation again, could be the ball and chain, and it's a hanging healing. So the scars, um, the, the valves of the vessels themselves become scarred and they don't function as well because of ongoing back and forth self-devaluations. Now we have the lymph system, and so the lymphatics are affected by, again, very similar regional intellectual relationship, abdominal, inguinal has to do with the sexual devaluation, behind the knee, athletic performance, and then there's also localized. So we hear this a lot that people will have, um, they'll say that the cancer has metastasized to the lymph nodes and it tends to be regional. So the, the breast, you would see the axillary lymph nodes perhaps are involved because the person is devaluing themselves in that specific region. Now the spleen, because it is part of the lymphatic system, that also has to do with a self-devaluation. Regarding the blood, so being scared of, of bleeding, if you've hemorrhaged at some point, that could be a triggering event. And there um, is also the white pulp of the, the spleen. Uh, being unable to clean or remove something is also an element of the lymphatic conflict. And so that could be you're upset that you can't get rid of the cancer or you're upset with the presence of the cancer. And so that devaluation of not being able to get rid of something will affect or can affect the lymphatic system. And then the fat tissue as well. And so this is a light, light self-devaluation or an aesthetic devaluation. Lipoma. So you can see a lipoma 
on the wrist in that image, xanthalasma, so self-devaluation regarding the aesthetics of the eyes or the face region, cellulite. And so if you are feeling embarrassed, if you are devaluing yourself, if you don't like the appearance of your, um, perhaps your legs or your buttocks, that causes degradation of the tissue during the conflict and then healing restoration, which actually makes the cellulite appear and worsen the more you dislike it. Cellulitis, inflammatory healing process after a self-devaluation. Here I wanted to give a couple examples of a generalized self-devaluation. So up to now we were talking about the specific areas and why symptoms and pain would show up in one area and not another. But there is also the possibility that this devaluation is affecting you as a whole. It's not confined to a certain situation or a certain spot on the body. It's affecting you all over. So it could be like osteoporosis where there's general loss of bone all throughout the body. Fibromyalgia, where there's not one tender spot, but there are several areas that are extremely painful. And then bone metastasis. So you'll sometimes hear of a person who got a cancer diagnosis and several months or several several years later, they now have cancer riddled throughout their spine, all throughout their body. And these would reflect devaluations where it's affecting the person as a whole. It's not confined to a certain situation. The person is feeling that all over they have lost self-worth, self-value. And so this is just another consideration if you're looking at an issue that's not confined to a specific region. Okay, so now that we covered most of the different specific reasons that a person would develop a self-devaluation conflict and why it would be in a certain area, let's talk about what happens on the tissue level, level when the conflict is going on. So this is a schematic of the second biological law that Dr. Hammer discovered. It's the law of two phases. The body has a normal homeostasis, a normal day-night rhythm. During the day, we are more fight or flight active. We're more in the sympathetic mode for activity, for getting around, for having energy. Now in the evening, our body switches over to the rest and digest mode and the parasympathetic activity of the body. And so that's how life normally is, sympathetic during the day, parasympathetic in the evening. Now, the moment you have a DHS or the moment that you experience a devaluation or conflict of some sort, the body shifts modes because it goes from saying, okay, everything's okay, our body, we're in a nice uh, normal rhythm, and then it says, okay, they're giving me signals that something is wrong, which means we have to adapt. And the adaptive phase is this cold phase. This is conflict active. This is prolonged sympathetic mode. And so this is where the body is, you know, you've got cold hands and feet. You can't really sleep or you wake up during the night. Compulsive thinking, heart racing, no appetite, your energy is higher. And so that's going to continue until the moment that you resolve the conflict. And then the body goes through a two phase of healing. We've got healing part A the healing crisis, the epileptoid crisis, and then healing part B. And so that's where the tissue is repairing and restoring. So let's look at conflict active for a self-devaluation. When the conflict is going on, there is active erosion of tissue. So you could call it cellular ulceration, necrosis, or atrophy. Basically, it's holes in the tissue. And functionally, this weakens the tissue. It increases risk of rupture or tear. Usually, there are no symptoms during this phase because typically you're pretty preoccupied, you're pretty energetic, and you just don't feel when you are having the, you don't feel the tissue changes when you are in this mode. Um, if it goes on for a very long time, you may have some muscle atrophy. So enough of the muscle has broken down to the point where it no, you know, it's actually noticeable. But that would have to persist for some time. So the psyche brain organ level, in the psyche there's compulsive thinking, extra waking hours, because again, your body keeps you awake because it wants you to resolve whatever this conflict is. The brain, there's a hammer focus in the cerebral white matter in the specific region that is affected. And then the organ, all depends on the intensity, the location, and the specifics of the situation. Now let's talk about the biological purpose of why is the body eroding tissue during this conflict? It doesn't necessarily make sense, but it does when you look at the big picture. So. Uh, Dr. Hammer called this the deluxe group, these uh, areas controlled from the cerebral white matter. 
the re if this is all about the ultimate biological purpose of this biological program is reinforcement this is strength and increase so the self-devaluation when you're experiencing this loss of self-worth feeling bad about yourself feeling not good enough in some way it's a biological cry for reinforcement and so when the body hears i'm weak i'm not good enough it has a solution in mind. It doesn't want you to persist in this state because being weak, being not good enough in nature makes you vulnerable. Uh, and so what it wants to do is to restore, rebuild, and make you stronger. But the way that it goes about doing that is kind of like if you were gonna go about making a house stronger. If you realize that this house was not good enough, not strong enough, wasn't gonna you know, withstand the first windy day, you wouldn't just add bricks to the outside of the house. You would probably open the house up, especially if you cared about it, you'd really do a good job. You'd go to the inner foundations, you'd get into the skeleton of the house, and you'd start restoring, replacing, rebuilding from the inside out as your solution. And so after the healing happens, after or after the resolution of the conflict, so every moment your conflict active, body says renovate, 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 breaks down tissue. The moment you resolve the conflict, the body shifts into healing. And what does it do? It restores, it rebuilds that tissue from the inside out, whether it's the bone, the lymph nodes, and it's the whole purpose is for it to be stronger, more robust, more resilient when that healing phase is finished. So conflict resolution, this is the resolution of the self-devaluation. This is the restoration of self-confidence. This is the main focus of my work with people is getting to this point of conflict resolution. And there's many possible causes. You've probably resolved so many conflicts in your life without ever being aware of it. You know, a lot of natural resolutions will occur, emotional release or forgiveness, a new perspective. You find out new information that changes how you were feeling before. You develop a new understanding of others. Your priorities shift. You just see a bigger picture. And so as soon as that conflict is over and you're not devaluing yourself anymore and you're feeling good again, here comes the healing. Now, the healing and restoration is pretty intense. The body has to repair the tissue. Um, and it's, it's intense, again, depending on the intensity of the conflict. So I'll have a little conflict, you know, from I, I missed my push-ups in my workout. And later on that day, I was like, oh, I, I forgot doing my push-ups. And I kind of felt bad about myself for a moment when I remembered that. And then, you know, I got over it. And the next day I had pretty bad wrist pain. My, my, my wrist was really sore. Um, I couldn't really move it very well because it was uh, so inflamed. And I was like, oh, you know what? I bet that was because I was feeling bad about myself and kind of beating myself up for missing my push-up. So it could be a little thing. It doesn't have to be, you know, something catastrophic, but there is going to be a renovation period there you had the conflict and now your body has to restore the tissue and so this really will help uh, get rid of the mystery of all of the aches and pains and kind of weird sorenesses that pop up when you're like i didn't do anything i didn't have an injury i don't know where this came from you had some type of self-devaluation conflict that happened that you weren't really aware of or it didn't even seem like a big deal but it was enough that your body got the message that it needed to do something so here we are in the first half of the healing phase. And so this is where the major restoration takes place. This is when there's inflammation and fever and pain and swelling. Swelling's a key here. So all healing happens in a fluid environment. So fluid rushes to the area. And so the area is tender, it's swollen. That swelling creates pain and pressure in the area. There are tissue changes. Typically you are exhausted because your body is saying, okay, all is well now. You need to you know, lay down and you need to rest so that we can rebuild and make you stronger now that that conflict's over. So this is where your body is restoring the tissue that was eroded. This is a period of cellular proliferation. And so we're building now, we're restoring. Your lymph nodes may be enlarged. You may have some deep bone pain, periosteum pain during this first half of the healing phase. Um, if you are healing from a bone devaluation, if you had bone involvement, this can be extraordinarily painful because as the bone is healing, it's stretching and the bone actually becomes very spongy during this stage. And that is why 
you are in such excruciating pain is the body doesn't want you to move. So while the body is restoring, rebuilding this area, you probably won't be doing much activity because the bone is actually weaker while it's in this healing phase. And it's stretching the periosteum, which is causing pain. Um, You might have some cholesterol repair in certain arteries because cholesterol is a healing tool. It helps to restore. Um, and rebuild the lining of an artery and that's the reason that people's cholesterol might spike during this time Um, and again that's not a bad thing that doesn't mean you ate too many eggs or too much butter it means that your body is in a healing stage and that cholesterol is necessary for healing so bone healing may take several months and it will take longer if there's conflict relapse back into the conflict active phase so psyche brain organ level at the psyche level you should be relieved. You resolved whatever that initial problem was that led to that. And so this, your state of mind during this healing phase is extremely profound because if you use these symptoms and your inability to perform activities due to this pain as another conflict, um, we'll, we'll talk in a couple of slides about this vicious cycle that we can get stuck in when we don't understand the symptoms of the healing phase. So in the brain, there's also gonna be healing. There's always healing on the brain level as well as the tissue level. So there's increased fluid in the brain which can cause headaches, possibly dizziness. And at the organ level, like we mentioned, it's a construction site. There is a lot of restoration happening. Now, halfway through the healing phase, once the body gets to the point of maximum swelling, maximum healing, now we need to squeeze out that edema. And so at that moment in time, there's a surge of sympathetic dominance. You might start feeling really anxious or uneasy, having sharp shooting pain somewhere, tingling, burning spasms, chills, cold sweats, stiff, tense muscles. This is where um, if the Hammer focus, if the region of control is in the motor cortex, like we talked about with those movement conflicts, this is when a seizure will occur. And again, all of this is biologically necessary to push out, to squeeze out the excess edema so that the body can finish the healing program. Now, here is where uh, you need to be aware of the KCT syndrome, which is the kidney collecting tubule syndrome. If you are experiencing any emotions of abandonment, isolation, refugee, being kicked out of somewhere, um, or existence, fear for your life, if you're extremely scared, that causes the kidneys to retain water. When the kidneys retain water, there's more fluid in your system, and that fluid goes to wherever is healing. And so that's excess swelling and brain pressure, and so that complicates the healing phase if you're also having the KCT syndrome active. Now at the psyche level, typically the epileptoid crisis or the healing crisis will occur at uh, a time of rest when you're really, really relaxed. It's like the deepest point of vagotonia or this deepest point of parasympathetic activity. Um, And the extent again of how intense this will be will depend on the conflict. And it's almost like in a split second you kind of relive whatever the conflict was that initiated this entire process. Uh, The edema is pushed out, it's squeezed out. You will have an increase in urination during and after this phase, and you may have a very severe headache at this time. On the organ level, we mentioned spasms. Um, It's gonna be unique to the type of the tissue. And then we turn the corner and the second half of the healing phase, you're not totally finished yet, but this is where the swelling starts to subside and there's completion of tissue healing. Uh, There's scar tissue formation and the body is just really repairing, really finishing up the job. Um, You should be in a feeling of relief, state of well-being. Um, Again, caution being stressed out about the healing phase itself. Some people will get so scared due to the healing symptoms that this initiates another type of conflict or the same type of conflict, which will put a person in a state of hanging healing where they never finish this, this healing phase. In the brain, there is glial cell proliferation, which is the scar tissue of the brain, which will restore and rebuild those areas that were affected by this impact. And the organ restoration of function, um, there's scar formation, and the continuation of the urinary phase. You may still be releasing excess water here. All right, so this is the vicious cycle I mentioned. What can happen is we can suffer a self-devaluation conflict. So this could be any type of situation that causes you to uh, feel unworthy, feel bad about yourself in some way. Um, 
And then there's the tissue erosion, like we talked about. And then you resolve the conflict. Either you just completely forget about what was going on, you're distracted, you're doing other things, you're probably not even aware. But the conflict resolves. And then your body goes into healing. And that's when the pain, the inflammation, the exhaustion, you can't perform, you're tired, you're hurting, you're confused, you don't know why this is happening because you didn't have an injury. And so you're kind of in this state of feeling bad about yourself again because you can't take care of your kids like you'd like to, you can't go to work. Um, you and it's like I am really uncomfortable right now I don't really have an explanation for it so this can cause you to devalue yourself again and this is how people continue to stay in this cycle where the body never finishes healing and this is chronic pain and it's totally completely understandable because if you don't understand where the pain is coming from and you think there's something wrong with you or that you're eating something wrong you're doing something wrong um, again what are you feeling you're not feeling good enough you're feeling like you're not doing something that you need to do you're doing something that you shouldn't be doing and that leads back into self-devaluation and so really the only way to break this cycle is to become aware of what's going on and become empowered and so when you're in pain you you recognize this pain is uncomfortable because my body is healing but when you change the meaning of what it means about you as a person. Yes, you may not be able to do the things you like to do, but when you have this understanding that when you get through this phase of healing, your body will repair. It's just when we get afraid that this there's something so wrong with us that we might stay here forever that we get stuck in this loop. And so that's really the hope that I want to bring to you today, that there is a way to break this cycle. It has to do with changing things about the way that you think about yourself. And that's really the, like I said, what I specialize in my work with people. And the goal of my work is to help you become aware and to resolve these conflicts through that awareness. Now, the German New Medicine perspective of metastasis is not that cancer breaks off from, from one region and moves to another. All secondary cancers from the GNM perspective come from additional conflicts that typically occur as a result of the diagnosis, but they could be concurrent. So a person could have several different cancers the first time they get diagnosed, but it's not because cancer moved from one place to another. It's because the person had suffered and was dealing with several different types of conflict shocks. So bone cancer is self-devaluation. Lymphatic cancer is self-devaluation. Brain cancer, every single conflict that you've ever had, any, any single symptom that you've ever had has always had brain involvement. So anytime you've ever had even the slightest headache, that was brain involvement. Um, and you know, perhaps if you got a brain scan at that moment, you might be diagnosed with brain cancer. Although in GNM, again, it's not brain cancer. It's not something going wrong in the brain. The brain is the control center. And so there's impact influence in the brain every time that there is a conflict shock. The liver is associated with a starvation conflict. Many people are put on restrictive diets as a result of their cancer diagnosis. And so a starvation conflict makes a lot of sense that a person might develop um, nodules in their liver. The lungs um, respond to a death fright conflict. And some people, that diagnosis itself, just being told that you have cancer, it seems like a death sentence. And some people may interpret it in that way, which will cause nodules or tumors in the lung. And now the self-devaluation, like we talked about, that diagnosis is such a shock. You know, you may feel terrible about yourself. How could you, you know, a lot of people blame themselves. How could I let this happen? How could this happen to me? Um, you're feeling guilty. You're feeling bad. Uh, the a burden to your family financially. I mean, so much goes on when a person is diagnosed with cancer. It's such an emotional experience. And so given that it's such an emotional experience, it makes sense that there'd be an emotional impact and then obviously a biological impact. So now we just want to finish up the presentation by covering the, th uh, the rest of the biological laws. So the third biological law, this is the compass of German new medicine. And so this just shows which areas of the uh, certain tissues, what they do during conflict activity. So today, again, we were talking about cerebral white matter. And so this is a newer portion of the brain. And so it responds during conflict activity with cell loss, ulceration, or necrosis. And during the healing phase, there is tissue restoration with bacteria. Now bacteria, that's part of the fourth biological law. Dr. Hammer found that diseases are not contagious. 
Bacteria and fungus, they don't cause or initiate sickness processes in the body. Rather, they are the optimizers of the healing phase. They are seasonal workers. They work off instruction from the brain. They co-evolved with us, our microbiome. Uh, these bacteria have been a part of us for forever. And so the bacteria actually help with the restoration process when the body is healing. Um, and so in the case of bone tumors, um, staphylococcus may be present because they specialize in bone repair and the repair of sub subcutaneous tissue. And so we think a staph infection is due to you know bad bacteria that you picked up in the hospital, but they actually are serving a purpose. Whenever there's a suspect, uh, suspicion of an infection, when there's bacteria at, a re at an area of the body, we know that that bacteria has a function. It's got a purpose. It's doing something as a part of the healing phase. And then the fifth biological law is the quintessence. This is that recognition that disease is not an error. Your body is not making a mistake. The significant biological special programs they are for the greatest benefit of the organism. They have developed, they've evolved over millions of years of evolution. They, they carry such great intelligence that allowed your ancestors to survive so that you are here listening to this presentation today. There are years and years of wisdom embedded in your nervous system. There's an ancient algorithm that's programmed specifically to help you survive no matter what. And that is what is going on anytime you have a symptom. When your body is doing something, there is a specific purpose, there's a reason. That's why this is called the sacred medicine because it's this interweaving of just this amazing, mysterious, and wonderful thing called life and that life strives for more life. It strives for more survival. And so it would never attack itself. It would never break itself down. You know, the idea of autoimmunity is a, a huge misconception because the body does not break itself down. Um, unless there is a reason, like we found with the bone. The bone is being broken down, but there is a specific purpose. It's for a, a, a biological reason. And so that is the, the beauty of German New Medicine and the beauty of this understanding. And so I have taken the wonderful, amazing wisdom of German New Medicine. So what we know about the science of how the body functions. And a lot of people are left wondering, well, what, what do I do now? Now that I know that this chronic pain that I'm experiencing is due to being stuck in a self-devaluation vicious cycle, how do I break that? How do I help myself to not devalue myself? How do I get this self-worth back? You know, and some people are able to just kind of make the recognition as soon as they hear that that's the case, they kind of instinctively have a way of resolving it. But if you are struggling with that, or if you're curious how you can learn more, I created a community designed around helping people use German New Medicine and actually apply it to their day-to-day -day life. Like, how do you stop a self-devaluation, become aware of it, and what kind of exercises, mental exercises, can you do to make that change long-lasting? So I created this Resolve community, and so it's a monthly membership site where you have access to a conflict resolution library. And so this is the uh, first month that the Resolve community exists. Every single month, we'll do a deep dive into a very specific conflict and give you exercises. Every module has a training video, a note pack, a workbook full of journaling exercises, daily thoughts, as well as a guided meditation. And I'm also adding bonus material into the Resolve community anytime that I feel like there's something I can add to help your understanding. So if you would like to check out the Resolve community, again, it's a month-to-month -month basis. So I'm offering a $5 off your first month membership that ex expires at the end of May with the coupon code YouTube. So just put YouTube in, you'll get $5 off your first month's membership. In the community right now, you'll have access to a five-day awareness challenge, which is a great way to get started with the Ever Better Thought technology and understanding how you create your experience and your perception. And then next month, starting June 1st, that is when I released the module all about self-devaluation. And so what we talked about today, if you resonated or if you're dealing with any of the symptoms associated with the cerebral white matter controlled tissues, this is gonna be the module for you because this is where we're going to go in to what specifically you can do to help 
you know, become more aware of how this conflict is staying active in your consciousness and then how you can resolve it. So if you have any questions about the program at all whatsoever, please send me an email, drmelissasell at gmail.com. You can find out more on my website, drmelissasell.com. I will put the link for the to check out the Resolve community in the description below, but you can also go to bit.ly, bit.ly slash the Resolve method to get to the website that tells you more about the program and how it works. So thank you so very much for joining in for this tutorial today, and I will see you again very soon. Hi guys, I wanted to do a quick tour of the Resolve community. I have a lot of people that have expressed interest in joining the community, and I wanted to just give you a sneak peek so you know exactly what it is you are getting. This is a one-of-a-kind type of membership where we are diving deep into the sources of psychobiological conflict shocks and giving you a roadmap, a guided tour on how you can help resolve your own conflicts. So this is is the main member page that you will enter into and this is the content that is currently in the course every single month we'll be adding new modules new content bonus material and it will all show up on this page here so you can click start course and it will take you to the course introduction and so this video we talk all about the resolve method and the six steps here on uh, in this section it's the downloads and so there'll be different notes packs that you will find in this download section different audio so this is the resolve intro note pack that you'll find here then you can click uh, you can mark it as complete if you'd like to just kind of check it off on your way then you go to the next category this is the five-day mindset of healing awareness challenge this five-day challenge is a guided uh, roadmap to developing conscious awareness so there's one exercise for each day and a video where we describe the exercise give you examples and show you how to go through it and so you can go all the way day one through day five as well as the challenge finale now we can pop back out go back to the main page after that, we have Understanding Conflict Shocks. Now, this is the module for this month. And since we're just getting started in the community, we wanted to give you a full understanding and background of conflict. So this is Conflict 101. And there is included a notepad here, as well as a workbook. So the workbook will have journaling exercises, as well as a list of thoughts for the day, things to think about, things to begin to replace beliefs and ideas that have been holding you back in the past. And there will be a Conflict 102 module because there is just so many nuances and details to cover. But this is is all of the information that you'll need to get started understanding conflicts. The next category we have is the guided meditation library. There's one loaded up here currently. This one is a German New Medicine guided meditation. So each of these are designed to help relax you, put you in that relaxed, easy state of mind and then give you some things to think about while you are in that state. And so this is all about the process of the five biological laws and what happens physiologically when you go through a conflict. So it helps to give you peace and to deepen your understanding of German New Medicine. Back to the main page again. Here we have GNM Music. So this is the Dr. Hammer Lullaby audio downloads. And so you may have read about how powerful music is for helping your emotional state. And Dr. Hammer actually wrote a song for his wife before he realized that there was a direct parallel between the second biological law, the law of two phases, and certain types of classical music. And so he's got this lovely, really wonderful lullaby um, sung by himself and then also a choir version and so these downloads are free included on the site I've looped them into hour-long tracks and Dr. Hama recommended listening to them on a on headphones at a low volume all throughout the day to help support your healing and so I wanted to make sure we had those available in the community as well the last section here is the Resolve Inner Circle announcements. The Inner Circle is different from the Resolve community membership. There is an 
increased fee for it and you get two live trainings per month in a separate Facebook group as well as access to my PDF PowerPoints for your use, whether you want to study them or you know if you teach in your community as well, you can have access to my PowerPoints. And so this is the Resolve community. It's amazing. There's so much uh, amazing information that you will learn in here and it is evolving. It will be growing every single month. Next month, starting June 1st of 2018, we are adding the module on self-devaluation. And so you'll get, once again, a guided meditation, a new training video, just like we have here for Conflict 101, but it'll be all about self-devaluation, as well as a note pack and a workbook. So that's what's guaranteed to come every month. And like I said, I will also be adding bonuses as I create them when I feel like there's just something that I definitely want to share with you and create a new resource. So I hope you enjoyed this little tour and please consider enrolling in the community. Thank you.